Thank you, Laurie. It is News Talk 1230 WFAS AM. It is Orlando in the morning, and we've been hearing a lot about coaching rumors for the Rangers after John Tortorella was fired. Some were, some were shocked about that. Myself, not so much, because I was actually rooting for it. Uh, Chris Kostopoulos, <laughs> he's got more seasons in the NHL than I do, so he's going to give us a little insight on this whole thing. Chris, you played for the Rangers, uh, and, and you've played for good coaches, and I'm sure you've played for bad coaches. And you and I have had some differences in the weight of John Tortorella on the Rangers, but apparently a lot of players felt that he was a problem. Yeah, uh, you know, no question. We're talking about we're talking about a, a toxic situation, I believe. You know, and uh, I've been around that. And you know, once once the players give up on you, there's only one one option, and that that means the coach has to leave. I mean, you're right. not going to fire the co- the players. It didn't seem like Sather wanted to. It seemed like he had no choice. Like after the season ended, it didn't seem as if Tortorella was going anywhere. No, it's kind of shocking how it ended up happening. I, I think, like, like you said earlier, a little surprise for some people, not for others. Uh, but, you know, those exit polls, I guess, you know, they take for the <laughs> players and uh, their comments. I mean, that, that carried a lot more weight than uh, than we all thought. For Henrik Lundqvist, the, literally the backbone of the team, the star of the team, for him to say, I'm not sure if I'm going to resign, that's got to scare the heck out of a GM. Yeah, I think I did uh, probably uh, put a little bit of a, a giddy up and go in Glenn Shader's pants a little bit there. Uh, yeah, I don't read too much into that. I think that's just uh, Henrik Lundqvist posturing for that big contract. Because let's face it, he's going to get one. Sure. If he doesn't, I'd be absolutely shocked. Uh, typical. Typ- it's a typical ploy used by a player of his status. So uh, you know, he deserves the money, and I think it's just a ploy there. But uh, yeah, I probably got Glenn Shader a little nervous. Um. The thing is, we're hearing now about different coaches being brought in. And look, I am a huge, huge Marc Messier fan. I mean, you could tell me that Marc Messier is having an affair with my wife, and I probably forgive (laughs) it. But do we really need, like, a a Gretzky's being rumored too. Do do the Rangers really need a star player? I mean, as much as I love Marc Messier, he coached the Canadian hockey team in like four games, and that, that's the end of his coaching career, his credentials. Do we really need to go that route? Well, you know, I, I, in today's game, I think uh, the coaching uh, shelf life's not very long. So, uh, you know, th- does experience matter these days? I mean, I still think it does, personally. I mean, okay. that's my opinion. But uh, I also look at the range of situation there, uh, Brian, is, is, is that you got, you know, familiarity is very important with this team. And you know you you, you got you might have to go with somebody within the organization that knows the players. You know you bring somebody in from outside who doesn't know the players, then you know you start you're basically starting from scratch again. And uh, you know again again a coach that, that that wants to coach a team a certain way and may not like a certain player or two, may want to move a player or two. Uh, I, I'm not sure. This is a tough situation. I mean, let's face it. You said it best. Mark Messier, is he not like considered like the god of New York Rangers? Pretty much. I mean, he guaranteed the cup. He got the cup. We got the yeah. parade. But to me, it it's too risky of a move with a team that's built to win now. I mean, a lot of these guys aren't getting any younger. And my problem is, do we have the time to risk on an inexperienced coach. I, I get it that Messier was a god on the ice, but will he be in that suit and tie? And do we have that time? Because we're also hearing about Lindy Ruff. Yep. Okay, you're Glenn Sather. What do you do? Boy, I'll tell you what. He's on the hot seat. Uh, I, I, he's got a tough situation here. There's all kinds of problems for Glenn Sather. First, he's got he's to he's handle a coaching situation, which is, which is number one and up front. You got guys with contract problems. You got the Brad Richards situation. He's got a handful going on right now. But uh, I tend to go with an experienced coach. That's me. Sure. But but you know who who, who is who's, who's the choice? Is it Alan Vigneault? Is it uh, is it going to be uh, Lindy Ruff? Is it going to be uh, Dallas Eakins from the Toronto Maple Leaf uh, organization? Is it going to be Guy Boucher who did a pretty good job? down south there in Florida, you know, considering they had not much of a team there. Uh, I'm trying to think. I've even heard stories of Mike Eves out of Wisconsin, believe it or not. You know, the NCAA team who coached uh, Ryan McDonough. I wouldn't have a problem with that. And again, you talked about familiar familiarity. That's fine. Yeah, that's big. That's big. 
But a guy like Messier just and Gretzky, they don't have enough coaching experience. To me, I get it. And, and say there is a bit of a stargazer. Yeah. You know, he wants the big names. He, he, he loves the headlines. But I'd rather go with a lesser name but a better coach. The Rangers are still built to win now. And to me, if you throw a Messier out there with no experience and he's terrible, I mean, like, what about Bukaboom? At least Bukaboom is coaching. Yeah, yeah, he's down. He's up in Hartford there, yeah. coaching the defense. No question. But I, you know, I agree. I listen, Brian. I agree with you. I think, I think in the end, if it's my decision, I think experience matters. But today's game is a fast-paced game when it comes to coaching life. Right. So you know, you you got a small window uh, that you have to start winning right off the bat. I mean, they're not going to give you five, ten years anymore like it was in the old days. Does John Tortorella coach again and coach again soon? Uh, probably not. Not, not you know. I, that's my guess. I mean, I mean, you know, I think he's a little toxic right now. Right. You know, unfortunately for him. I mean, whether people like to like, like it or not. I mean, you know, last thirteen years, he's the only guy that took the Rangers to an Eastern Conference Finals. So sure, he's, he's a little toxic right now. I think he's a little bit of a hot potato. Well, the thing is. The longer John Tortorella waits for that job, I mean, what if somebody else does come in? I mean, somebody else will, but what if whoever comes in brings the Rangers to a cup next year? I mean, that will look even worse for him. Will that make it harder for him to to get a job? No, you know, like if you, you take a look at the history of the NHL, I mean, even though I say the game's changed a little bit in the coaching department, they like to recycle the old treads. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of coaches that have, have coached a lot of places. Look at Ken Hitchcock down in Dow. Uh, you know, I mean, in St. Louis, he's been in Dallas. He's been everywhere. I mean, he's still he's still got a job. I yeah. mean, there's plenty of guys like that. Yeah, he got fired he's everywhere. Okay. Coached Carolina. He's in Pittsburgh, in sure. Philadelphia now. I mean, you never know. You can you, you can never say no no to that. Well, Chris, before I go to traffic, I enjoy listening to your show because we kind of trade off. You do my show, <laughs> we'll call in yours. So tell everybody where they can catch you. Yeah, uh, the Instigators uh, Blog Talk Radio Hockey Show. Uh, this week we'll be on Thursday night at eight thirty, not Wednesday. I have a golf outing on Wednesday, so I can't make it. Uh, and then you can uh, take a look at my uh, website, uh, chriscutsopolis.com. Lots of goodies there, lots of good pictures. And uh, for you Ranger fans, there's a couple of good ones in there with uh, a couple of New York Islanders. <laughs> R- rather than try to spell Katsopolis, I posted it to the Orlando in the Morning yeah. page. You could just link up right there. It's much easier yeah, it, that way. It took, it took me to grade four <laughs> to, to learn how to spell my last name. <laughs> I, I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, I felt, I'm like, I feel so bad for this guy when he was in elementary school. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was too many vowels. <laughs> Chris, thank you for joining the show. You're always welcome hey. here, brother. Yeah, awesome. Thanks a lot, man. Have a good day. You too, brother.